So the more that each individual is able to open the mind, the body, the spirit to connect with the soul and the, and the earth and to do that through meditation or prayer. Listen, prayer, meditation, lying down on your back, on your side, in your car, it does not matter what matters in order to have divine guidance and connection is your intent, your heart. Yeah, if you're just, yeah, I really want to connect, you know, I, no. If you truly humble yourself to the cosmos, it's like being humble. If you humble yourself to the cosmos, the cosmos will, will be there for you. If you are able to open yourself up through whatever modality you choose, that's the most powerful way to connect with these beings. And it doesn't have to be something physical. A lot of people say that they want to have physical contact with these beings. Whew, I don't think so. I just don't think that most people could handle it. Because I've seen how having those encounters in the physical form, what it does to your, your physical body. Because I looked different when I walked off that craft. I physically looked different. I don't know how, but I did. Everybody told me that. And I actually was at one and a quarter inches taller when I walked off that craft than when I walked on. Immediately. My mother, the first time I saw her after this experience, she looked at me, she started crying. She said, I don't know who you are. You're not my daughter. She said, you don't even look like my daughter. I want my daughter back. She said, what have you done with her? My, both my sisters did the same thing. They said the exact same thing to me. So the molecular structure of the body is changed it completely if you have a physical contact. So one of the things that I talk about is how to make contact through um, meditations and dreams. And all you have to do is ask for that and to be clear about what you're asking for. Because I have used a very, very simple prayer for, you know, since 1988. I've, 1988, I've used this prayer. And it says, and it goes like this, it's very simple. Um, I only allow goodness, truth, love, and light to come to me or through me, for I live my life in the light of God. So I'll say that again. I only allow goodness, truth, love, and light to come to me or through me, for I live my life in the light of God. I ask my guides and protectors to come and be with me in the here and now throughout my meditation or throughout my dream time to teach me and show me what it is that I need in my life or that I need to know. I ask this from my heart. I ask this from my soul, from my being to be so. And if you're asking for it in a meditation or you're asking for it in the dream time, I add at the end, please allow me to remember in the morning. And it's really as simple as that, because if you start working with that with your dream time, you can ask questions like that and get answers. And you, you just keep asking simple, simple questions. And you'll wake up one morning either realizing that, oh, you've had a, you know, you just had the realization that you know the answer, or you will actually remember the dream in detail. But you will have that happen if you practice this. And it's a very powerful way to have it, have it, have this kind of contact. It is important that no matter what it is that you are doing in any kind of a meditation or prayer, that we are clear within ourselves with our intent of what we want and how we ask for it, because every word is important. 
If you want to know something, you can say, I need, I ask, I request that you show this to me now, in the here and now. Show me something, show me a sign, show me a symbol, show me, bring someone to me and allow them to give me a message. I will watch for them, I will listen. There's all these different ways that we can make contact. And in order to make physical contact, you know, I would just say to people that if you want to just have a sighting, you can, you can ask for that. Say, I go into a meditation and ask them, say, I would, like to ha I would like to physically see one of you in the sky, but I don't want to be taken. You know, be clear because they might come and get you. And I'm being very serious. So you need to be careful of what it is that you're asking for. Because otherwise, I might see you a year from now sitting up here doing a presentation on this. And I've seen that happen where people have had a contact and then their lives, so many people, they have contact and their lives completely change. The other thing that happens is when people even just have a sighting and they just have a sighting and then all of a sudden they're like, oh. You know, there's something there and you can jump up and down and you can do all these things, but then you walk away and within a couple of days, all of a sudden your, th your thought process is different and you start seeing things differently. And all of a sudden you're waking up going, wait a minute, why, why did I never see that before? Why did I never have that understanding before? Why can I all of a sudden have more empathy? Why am I more uh, conscious about what I'm throwing in the garbage or what I'm buying? or who my friends are, or what my job is. Why am I becoming more conscious about this? So this is, this is a very powerful way to make contact. And, you know, when people say, I want to make contact, you're already making contact every day. The question is, do you see the contact being made? Because the contact from, quote, extraterrestrials, I think cosmic again, is not just from beings but from cosmic, cosmic, uh, cosmic, uh, cosmic flow of energies that are in organized chaos. It's in organized chaos. Everything has a purpose and a reason. Everything is in total chaos. So in order to make a prediction, it's very difficult to do so really, really, really far in advance. There are key things that will always that it takes more to throw them off, off, uh, off the path. So more energy is needed. And that's what's happening with the planet in the awakening of it, is that we are, th we are th pushing off this negative future because globally we are awakening and globally each and every person that is here today, that goes to these conferences, that is doing meditation and prayer, and global meditations and unif unifying meditations. The people who are studying spirituality in any form, the people who are um, uh, supporting uh, the, the earth through environmentalism and caring for the earth, moving to greener products, we are all creating energy within ourselves and our communities and our earth that is throwing this negative uh, future off track. But again, there's those key points along the way, you see, that we still have to move and we haven't gotten there yet. They're not all removed. So we are getting there. We've done a fantastic job of doing it according to these beings. I'm often asked if I still have contact with them and I would say yes, absolutely. Do I hear them or see them or how do they connect with me? Well. I, I, see, I see spirituality and, and the cosmos as them at times because that's what, that's what brought me on this journey. I've been on this incredible month-long traveling and I still have another three weeks of travel to go. I, sat, I was sitting at my home a month ago and I had no idea I was going anywhere and everything started to come and all I did was follow the signs. I follow the signs. There's signs and symbols around us. There's people giving us messages all the time. If people want to make contact, let's think about making contact with ourselves. Forget the extraterrestrials. Because as soon as we open up ourselves, 
we all of a sudden see the language that's sitting in front of us. It is a language that is sitting in front of us. And to understand that language is when we start to be able to put together the pieces in our lives that will lead us to the next step of awareness, of being in service, of being able to inspire someone else, to be able to formulate and bring and birth, to birth the idea into manifestation of what it is that we are truly here to do. You know, I, I was at someone's house in Carmel, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful spot in Carmel. It was quite beautiful. It was amazing. A friend of a friend's home and um, her mother had just passed. So the, we we'd talked a lot about her mother passing and my mother passing as well. And uh, it makes me think about some of the last words that I ever said to my mother. Because she, she was nervous. She was fearful of dying. And I said to her, Mama, the only thing that we as human beings ever come to, to, to do is to love. And there is nothing else, nothing that we, we do. Everything, everything that we think that we're doing revolves around love in its purest form. And I said, Mama, you leave this world with three of your babies giving you unconditional love. And you leave this world with all three of us knowing that you have given us unconditional love. So you have done what you came here to do. You have shared this unconditional love. And that is what we are here for. So we can talk about extraterrestrials all we want. We can talk about religion or all the differences or the wars or the pain of the world. But when we bring it down and down and down and down, that's what we are here for, is love. Because I recently had a conversation with, with a dear friend of mine who means a great deal to me. And we were talking about how we speak to each other and how when, when you, can you can give criticism to someone with love or you can give it to them with anger and hatred and the one will cause pain and the other will uplift. But you can say anything you want no matter how bad it is, if you do it with love. And you will do no harm. But if you do it with any agenda or anger or ego or any other aspect other than love, you will do harm or can do harm. It is about how we communicate with each other. And these beings have been slowly upgrading our DNA um, ensuring that we don't have nuclear war because they've been, uh, you know, for years, they've shut down nuclear tests and, and uh, around the world. And this is fact. We all know this in this community. Um, scientists are finally getting closer to uh, recognizing that interdimensional travel and interdimensional space is, does actually exist. They're finally, uh, scientists are talking about time travel. And in that regard, I gave a detailed, uh, you know, story years before the scientists came out with how time travel actually works with folding space in light and light the fractures and how they work. And it just goes on and on. And, and still, I, I, I would still actually be able to sit down with them and tell them even further. Although I probably wouldn't because then they'd probably try it and I don't think that that's a good idea. Although the debate is there that there's time travel actually existing. That's a whole nother subject. So um, I, th I think and I hope that I've shared insight into, you know, my personal experience with this. I hope that, that whatever it is that I have shared, you'll be able to take with you and, and really contemplate your, your part in it. Um, and why, why you're interested in these things and the inherent curiosity of what this is about. Uh, I think it's important to to work from a place of understanding that we really know nothing because that's the way I feel. And imagine I know a lot and I still feel as though I know nothing. 
I still feel that I'm growing and I'm still very normal, you know, even with all of this, I'm cranky and, you know, I'm, I'm normal and I want to remain that way because I think that life is about living life, enjoying it and loving your, loving your family and your friends, even when they're, it's difficult being understanding and compassionate towards the people who are not compassionate towards you being uplifting to those who are in need of our support and our guidance. These are the things that are important. Extraterrestrials are not important. These are the things that are important. The extraterrestrials are just helping us to recognize that and spiritual awareness is coming through a lot of these people. Um, I, I was told, you know, in 1988 that all over the world, people would be given the same message that this unifying message would begin. And I mean, I'm looking back on the history where 30 years ago, man, I said alien, people didn't even know what I was saying. I, I nine months after this happened, I was 22 years old. I walked off that craft. I looked different. I talked different. I sounded different. I, w I locked myself in my room for months writing things. I, I locked myself in that room for months writing things out. Everybody wanted to commit me to, uh, you know, psychiatrists. They wanted to commit me. They wanted to throw away and lock away. They wanted to do some terrible things. Lots of people did. I was alone for nine months until I finally saw a little ad that said, oh God, what did it say? Um, calling all star beings or something. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> you know, I finally found someone. I've gone from that where I, I looked in every bookstore, every spiritual shop, every kind of, I mean, you name it, I was there. Searched the entire city of Vancouver where I lived at the time to try and find one person that I could talk to, couldn't find a soul. Think about that and where we are today. And I directly relate that not to Buddhism or Hinduism or uh, to, to any religion or yoga or meditation. I directly relate it to ufology. I, I relate it to the expansion of ufology because when I look out into the alternative uh, media and I look into everyone that's actually speaking about spiritualism in the alternative communities, these people are all talking about ufology and many of them a really high, if not, you know, if not all of them almost have had either experiences, dreams, visions, astral and then we come out and what we talk about or what we want to talk about for the most part is spiritualism. We don't want to be talking about what a UFO looked like because it's, it's, we're past that. We're moving past that. So this is where we are today. And, you know, it's such an honor to be here and to, to have, uh, uh, you know, just time to be able to share a few little tidbits more about what's happening and where we're going because 2012 was not the day it was the entire time period and we're in that time period they told me that we were going to be moving that the way that the cosmos move that that the planet itself was going to be shifting to a space where there would be more particles of the cosmos directly hitting the earth which would then come through the earth's uh, atmosphere and enter into the bodies of human and change their DNA. Now imagine I was told that 30 years ago and, and that information's only come out in the last few years. You see what I mean? So I'm still waiting for more information to start coming out so that people can start grasping, you know, and so that we all as a community, I'm excited. I've had confirmation that everything that I remember that I talk about in my, in my dreams is real. Um, I write about it in my book, bluestarfulfillingprophecy.com. Four languages, download for free. You can also find it, um, you know, on Amazon, but go to my website. It's free. Yes.
Oh, good question. So, um, what, were they responsible for destroying the third world going into the fourth? No, they were responsible for, for helping to wipe it clean. Yes. And what they said was that we were going to be going into what they called the fifth world. And we are in, we are right close to the edge of going into the fifth world. We're, we're almost there right now. We're not there yet, but we're almost there. Don't ask me how I know that. I can't explain. Say again? Well, I call these beings that I had contact with the great ancestors because I see them as part of our heritage of where we came from, that, um, that we were made in part in their image. Human beings were. Yes. I just wanted to make a correction. Your website is bluestarprophecy.com. What did I just say? Oh, the, that's the that's my book. Yeah, blue blue star prophecy, blue star fulfilling prophecy is my book, and blue star prophecy is yeah my website. Go ahead. Uh, you had touched on the the gifted um, enlightened beings in the third world. Yes. And that the ancestors had assisted in taking them off of. Mm -hmm. Do I yes. Okay. And so, forgive me if I didn't understand the clarity on the fourth world, the um, we're becoming <clears throat> enlightened again. Are oh. they assisting us, or why are they assisting us when they took the third world <coughs> folks off the planet and that were already enlightened Be and gifted? That's an excellent question, actually. Thank you. Okay, so the, 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 the beings, the, the humans, that were living the right way from the third world were taken off planet, and then they were brought back into what we're living in now, the fourth world. M most of these people were the indigenous of the planet, okay? But then what happened was, again, you can't have just one, um, you, you, we can't just have one vessel. So what they did was they recreated again, the, let's say the bloodlines. They recreated the bloodlines again and then allowed them to evolve. So new DNA and e evolution was introduced onto the planet again. And this time what they did was they changed the vessel so that not quite as much uh, uh, cosmic connection was there so that we would we would have to slowly evolve so that we could learn the basics of um, you know respect honor compassion love uh, caring for for each other and for the environment to live in unity so that we wouldn't wouldn't all of a sudden get the candy store again and go to town and destroy it all in a day so that's what the bloodlines the newly formed bloodlines were about so you'll, right now we have the old DNA, the old lineage of the third world, which I believe is the indigenous. And then we have the new, which is the rest of us. So that's what's happened. Sir? Yeah, um, you mentioned about the fourth world, uh, which you're talking about the fourth dimension also. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, these particular beings, the, the tall blondes, the great ancestors, have the ability to materialize and dematerialize, absolutely. They, they have the ability to not only be um, in, in our physical world, but also in other dimensional worlds. And they have the ability to time travel. And they have the ability to go to other planets as well. So they are really, really, really high, highly evolved. <laughs> So, <clears throat> rather than getting caught up in the numbers, 
of first, second, third, fourth, fifth, tenth, hundredth dimension. Let's talk about what the reality is from my perspective, okay? In the beginning of time, there was thinking, this is how I can describe it, there was a sphere of energy, which was known as consciousness. Don't ask me how it started, I don't know. That's too far for me. They didn't show me that. This ball of energy had consciousness. The consciousness was one. On the outside, the density was light. In the center, the consciousness was dense and heavy. As a result, the consciousness that resided in the center of the sphere was able to, in its capacity, hold more knowledge and understanding. Then something happened and the consciousness was exploded and consciousness went out to other parts of the cosmos in all directions. These are souls. Some souls went to other planets and lived and decided to go into the life that existed on other planets. Some went into other dimensions and became light beings. Some went into human bodies, us. When these souls were traveling, okay, they travel, 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 they can go anywhere when, especially in the beginning, they could go anywhere that they wanted to go. So not only were some of these souls already inherently more knowledgeable about the cosmos and life, but they also had the ability to understand that they could go further and do more. So, <clears throat> When human beings, the souls, come into body, some people feel no connection to an extraterrestrial life whatsoever, past life. Some people only feel that they've been human beings, which could very well be true, other than when they go into spirit and we die and we transform into, the, into our light bodies for that. But <clears throat> the spiritual essence of who we are could have only traveled to Earth and then just kept incarnating. And some of us may have been like, woohoo, are you kidding? I'm going to go travel the cosmos. So here we are, we're the traveling cosmos. And then we come back and we go, oh, there's planet? Okay, I'm going to go to Earth. So when we come in, some people will be like, wow, I feel like I'm an alien. I feel like I'm from another planet. I don't feel right here. What's with me? I don't feel, it feels so strange. Because their reality is that they've gone through and they've lived all these other lives in other places that they can't even describe, but they feel it and they know it. So when people talk about, oh, we're living in the third dimension, the fourth dimension, the fifth dimension, I prefer to see it as what is useful. And <coughs> understand that, I think, so that we can relate to each other better, so that we have an understanding of ourselves oh maybe that's why i feel like i haven't been here before maybe that's why i feel like i've lived 10 lives as a you know as uh, someone from you know australia or someone from new guinea or you know whatever the case is where you feel that attraction to something that's probably because you've had a life there not always but that's part of it and also when we come in as souls we can also bring part of that collective consciousness that's out there we can bring some of that with us that's why for example and I think that this is really important when when we incarnate there's an area that I call the void I call it the void because it has everything it has everything and it has nothing at the same time and when we come into our spiritual bodies so there's the soul which carries and it carries the the baggage of everything that we've done so if, if, if I've come all the, over here and I've done all of this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to carry the energy and the, the memories to a degree and all of that from over here and the energies. If another person, they're going to come from over here, okay? But then we have to go through the void. The void has everything. What happens when you go through that space is you dump everything into it and you take things out of it. So you'll have 
50 people that say, I was so-and-so in a past life. Well, that's because they took that aspect. They decided to take that aspect of that energy into their being when they incarnated. So dimensional levels of our existence as far as spirituality is concerned from, from what they taught me is more about where we've been as, as each individual and then as the collective and how we relate. I meet people sometimes and I'll meet them once and in we are that's it and nothing will break you apart nothing will make you run away from each other no matter what you're stuck with each other because you're in the same dimensional space big answer to your question i think <laughs> anyone else questions No, um, you know, it, when I was on the craft, <clears throat> I don't remember them telling me. Um, there's, a, there's another little point that I'll say before I get into that a bit more. I walked off that craft, these two beings leaned over, to, over me and they said, you will remember this, you will remember. And that, what they shared with me and what they've asked me to do in a peaceful, loving, caring way, and law-abiding, by the way, you know, I always throw that out there because I think that people are forgetting that we need to, we need to also abide by the law of the land. We need to do that. We need to be mindful that we are not creating tension the way that things are today in the world, especially here right now. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not the way to go. But they told me, uh, you know, that I would remember. And I walked off that craft and I started. And the memories that I shared with you today are not <coughs> memories that came back as a result of hypnotherapy. My sister remembers an incident, and I will get back to this in a second. My sister remembers an incident from when I was a child, seeing a UFO. Someone down the street corroborated um, 40 plus years later that, that a UFO hung out uh, right where I said that it did. They, they never knew it. They never heard my story. They didn't know anything about it. People, there's so many people that corroborate everything in my book. There are people that, that, um, that have witnessed my, my experience. And I think that that's important because people talk about this subject and um, they're talking about it too loosely. It's, it's, it is a serious, uh, it is a serious and important subject. And for that reason, when people ask me, where are they from? I make it clear that I don't remember them telling me. And I would do a disservice to you and to this whole story if I tried to figure it out. Because if I went into a meditation, I don't trust myself, to be quite honest not with a question that would be so important to then spout out at you, oh, they came from the Pleiades, or they came from the Sirius system, or they came, because then everything that I shared beyond that would then be attributed to every other person that ever talked about that star system or those beings. And I would prefer that that not happen. <coughs> because I, I see this, I see the contact, I see contact with all of us as being uh, profoundly relevant to today's society because it is it is it is dri it is a driving force right now. Aliens are everywhere. They here? are everywhere. Too? Do you think they're among us? Do I think that they're among us? Absolutely. I I honestly believe that some of some of them are. Yes. Well, what's that? Yes. Yes. You asking? You know, because they, they, yeah, there's a really long history. And some, some of them, you know, they also said to me something very interesting. They said, just because you come across uh, another being that looks like us, it does not mean that they are part of our group. So what they're saying is that they're no different than human beings. There's good and bad in everything. And... It's again going back to the intuition that we have 
as as individuals to be able to to grow and expand. Does anyone? Okay, so the dark, when I said that the dark souls had incarnated into the third world and that they, some of them, yeah, third world, and that they're also incarnating back again. Think about, again, what, what created each, uh, what created our souls, remember? In the center, the dense ones that have carry the knowledge and the ones on the fringes that don't know very much. So they're fragmented. It's like looking at something that's fragmented. It's not whole. They don't have the compassion DNA, let's say, or the the part in, of the of the being the bodies are the resonant frequency that's part of it the the bodies are the resonant frequency of how much and what we can we can let through so that's part of the equation but the other part is the soul itself and what it carries so those th these things all combined mind body spirit soul you have to have four parts people always talk about three parts there's four parts, mind that regulates your connection between bo body, spirit, body, spirit that lives here, and then the soul that is the collection of everything. About higher self, we're talking more about soul. That's, where you, that's what you're going to is the soul that's up here. The soul has everything. Whereas the body carries the memory through the energy itself does that make sense yeah so the so the 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 just to be clear about this because it's a really great question actually it's a really great question the the fringes of the of the original energy that was thrown out into the universe is what actually the darker souls are and that's why it is our responsibility as individuals to continue to meditate and allow that energy and those droplets to keep flowing out of us because the more we let them go the more they enter into those other beings and the more and they w awaken do you see what like one of us could be part of the dark that needs the help right right right, right. yeah yes this is my question jesus made a statement two thousand years ago yes he said that in my father's domain, there are many mansions. Mm -hmm. The mansions, into my understanding, mm -hmm. that, that there are many other people. Yes. On other planets. Yes. And for humans to find the little Jesus, they followed some star. Yes. Supposedly. Yes. I'm bringing this up because it's questionable on many aspects of our human life. Mm -hmm. And so I wonder, in your contact, what did they feel about this fellow called Jesus? If so there was any contact whatsoever in that realm. So to be a servant to the creator and I believe that this being had DNA upgrades by extraterrestrials and that through that process because we have to remember that Mary was it was an immaculate conception so I believe that that there was not only Jesus, but other beings that have lived on, on the earth as, as masters and teachers that have had um, extraterrestrial contact and that, that's who they are. But I, I have memories of Jesus. I have memories of Jesus, actually, from past lives. And um, I know that he was here and that he was, he, he was nothing more than a servant. He committed his life to being a servant to God, creator, creation. And that what he taught was not to look away from self, but to look at self. 
and that it was man, and it has been man, that has taught to look away from self, but to God. Some of my best arguments have been in churches, okay, with pastors. Ooh, they don't like me. Because when I was really young, I was hyper, 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 hyper sensitive, gifted psychically, hypersensitive. And I remember um, going in and, and they talked about, you know, the, 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 the prophets and the prophetess and this and that and chosen by God and la, 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 la. And, but if you get a message from God and you think it's God, it's the devil thing. And I, I walked up to him and I said, I said to him, are you telling me that, <clears throat> I said, can you tell me who, who said that? Who, who said that? Who said that if, if I, I said, if I am, if I receive a message from God, and I tell you I just received a message from God, I said, can you tell me, who, t who are you telling me that it's, who is it exactly? Did God say that? Is it in the book somewhere that it's the devil? I'd like to, I'd like to see the passage. And they were like, oh, and I said, yeah. So what you're saying is that you as a human being and simply a, a very, you know, normal human being are going to pass judgment on God's servant. Is that what, is that what you're about to tell me? I said to him, I said, I, as a, as someone standing here, and I, I mean, I'm not implying anything here. I'm just saying that all of us, all of us who are doing this work for the betterment of humanity are servants to God, God, creator, creation, source, whatever you choose to call it, him, her, the, it's all the same, but we are all servants to that creation. Similar to the Zetas, yes. The little ones that took me to the blondes, yes. No, I think that they chose my physical body because my family lineage, the, the structure has been made, um, was made and it was right. And I know that my soul comes from a certain place and that that's, you know, my soul has a lot to do with why I was chosen, um, and why, you know. Did you have this somewhere in the back of your mind that you wanted to meet aliens or anything like that, in your subconscious, maybe? And, you, and that, therefore, it was created? Because of I don't know how someone creates that when they're a baby. Well, but you weren't a baby. Well, no, I'm not saying when you're a baby, but when you got abducted, but prior to that, have you maybe had, had no. some kind of inclination? No, no, no. But what I will say, in your question. What I will say in regard is I think I understand what you're trying to get at. And what, I'm, what I'll say is this. One of the things that I did right after the experience or shortly thereafter is I started this abduction group. It's a big mistake called too much attention to myself. Shouldn't have done it. <laughs> Not back then. Mm -mm. But um, what we noticed very quickly was that it's, it, it was, um, there were patterns to, to the contact. And that was around four or five years old, four or five, six years old usually around f four years old, five years old, first contacts. Then we had a contact again around not nine, 10 years old. Then again, around 16. Then again, around 22. And then again, we might, and then the contacts dissipate at that point. Yeah, con I mean, I understand the contacts, like the physical, physical contacts. contacts, yes. Some of the people that were being physically taken were having experiences at the same ages. So that's a very well-known uh, research fact. One moment. Yes. Could you repeat the prayer of protection that you use? C could I repeat the prayer? Certainly. Um, Is it in your book? No. And everyone asks me for this prayer. I really need to get it onto my website. <laughs> um, I, I only allow, I only allow goodness, truth, love and light to come to me or through me for I live my life in the light of God. I ask my guides and protectors
to come and be with me now. And then I take the prayer from there. Sorry? Soul? I wanted to touch a little bit on now that you said the prayer. It's a personal prayer that can be used, I believe, but we can all make our own prayer that protects us and uh, keeps us from anything that's not serving us. Just wanted to throw that out there. And as for the religious question, I also, I've had similar experiences as yourself, and never has Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to ask you, has religion ever had anything to do with your context? Because for myself, it never has. So I was just religion has never played any role in my contact or my belief system. But what I have found that's most fascinating is that everything that I've learned relates to every single religion and belief system in some way. And the more I see it and the more I learn, the more I am just absolutely floored. Um, you know, maybe at some point when I always crack a joke when I'm rich and famous, and I have 10 assistants, I'll get, you know, I'll start working on all of this and put more information out in, in, in a book. Uh, this, yeah. go ahead. Thank you. So I'm just going to say it again for the people at home in case they can't hear that um, uh, someone just said that um, that it's the same story as the creation uh, as the, uh, in, in Kabbalah. Kabbalah. <laughs> Got it right. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that because I actually noticed that in a lot of a lot of religions um, it, it, and Judaism as well. There's a lot of little things that are very, very, very interesting. And in in um, indigenous beliefs and uh, Buddhism and uh, Hinduism, it's fascinating. I wish I could just pick up all the pieces, and maybe I'll be able to at some point pick up the pieces and show you the the mosaic that I see in all of it. Well, the interesting thing about the Earth itself is that it has um, it, it has it has this strange effect, meaning um, we we are in every. This is what I understand from them: is that in every other reality that exists, even on other planets. They are more unified, meaning they might have telepathy on a planet or they just have more connection to one another. Whereas on Earth, you can really be an individual. And as that individual, you can sit all day, all night for 20 years if you want and stare at a piece of sand and contemplate it. And that is the beauty of being here on Earth. So the earth is very very special because of the way that it's slowed down the energy here is slowed down so when people always talk about higher vibrations and high that's kind of true but we don't want to go so high that we leave this reality we want to go high enough where we can travel to the other realities and come back and interact with it with an understanding, but we don't want to actually leave because the, the I, I mean, think about, um, you know, holding someone's hand and what that feels like and what happens if you're in love and you how you, your, your heart might pound and your eyes start to glisten, all those things. Think about that for a moment. Those kind of sensations are not quite the same in any other reality that exists. So this is a very unique reality. Um, if they made bodies identical, I mean, we would just look identical, I guess. But um, for the birthing process, let's say, um, there's certain aspects of the, of the beings that are not quite functional for birthing. Thank you, ladies. That's not a good idea. Birthing big heads like this? I don't think so. So there's reasons why. <laughs> I'm sorry. Got to crack a joke there. 
Is it? <clears throat> yeah. Um, you were talking about kind of sifting through, you know, kind of all the religions or the mm -hmm. ancient cultures, I think you were talking about. Yes. To try and find commonality. And can you kind of put in perspective, because one of the commonalities I see is that people always talk about the soul being endangered, being damaged somehow by whatever reason. Um, is it out like, I don't know, I'm thinking like demonic possession, you know, like the worst case scenario. Some UFO cultures talk about, or segments talk about. Oh, okay. Know. Okay. Um. Is it what, I guess, is, is it, um, <coughs> okay. is it an issue? Can the soul be damaged? Can, it, can the soul be damaged through, for example, um, some people talk about, for example, some kind of possession or demonic possession that might take place um, <clears throat> and then damage the soul. Um, unfortunately, that is correct, that the soul is, is changeable. And you have to think about it as the vessel again, right? So we have, we have a good vessel and then all of a sudden something else gets dropped into it. It's like, you know, if we are the water in the glass and all of a sudden somebody slowly starts putting, pouring in oil, what's going to happen? The water is going to start to be destroyed and over time it will no longer be water. It will be something else. So yes, the soul itself can be changed. D to say that it's destroyed, it just changes its form and it can be it can be changed, but, um, and can it come back? Well, it's going to take a very, very, very long time, and it won't be the same, because one thing that we know for sure is that, it, that's constant, is that everything changes, that nothing is ever the same at any given point in time, anywhere, even in, here on the planet, or in the cosmos, or anywhere else. Nothing is ever the same. So everything is always in constant change. And what would happen in a case like that where the soul was changed is that um, what would happen was, would be that the, the soul would somehow, uh, whatever pieces of it would just sort of drift away. And until it sort of formed um, another bond with another piece of, of energy that was conscious and formed enough of it to become a conscious unit again, it would not be a soul. So it is, it is true. But I will say this, in, in this field of ufology, um, I do not agree with a lot of the people um, that, that speak in the public. I have disagreement with, I, you know, I just don't agree with what they're sharing. I, I, I just don't believe it. Or I think that they're confused or, uh, I, I, what I see them putting out is information to frighten people rather than to uplift and uh, protect them, for example, from those kinds of situations. You know, the Hopi are extraordinary people, and um, I've done a lot of work with them over the years. And one of the things that they always say, and they, they've drilled this into me, oof, I've gone through some difficult times like with them with some serious issues that I've helped them with as an advocate and they've always told me the same thing don't focus on that negative don't focus on it now that you've told us and we know we're good let it go just let it go walk on because whatever you focus on is what you build so if if people are focusing on conspiracy nothing but conspiracy theories and um, negative aspects of ufology, well, they're just going to create that for themselves. They're going to create the negative events as well because that's what they're creating. That's the energy that they're picking up because like attracts like. It's not opposites. So think about thinking about that. But through, through universal law, you can protect yourself, and I'm going to tell you how. I'll only tell you briefly. But if you do what I'm, to say, what I'm suggesting, you'll be able to protect yourself. People ask me, I'm having an experience that I don't want to have. These extraterrestrials are bothering me or spirits or anything else. First of all, you just look at them and you say, by universal law, I demand that you leave immediately. I do not want to speak to you. I, by universal law, you must listen to me now in this moment or everything will be taken from you. 
and you let that go. Because universal law, there is, there's something called universal law, and it's a law. It's, it's, the, it's the basis of, of, of keeping everything in its place. And if we don't have universal law, then nothing would exist at all, and we couldn't protect ourselves. So this is where you'll hear stories about people who were very gifted psychically, and they misused their powers for, for real ego or um, money or whatever and all of a sudden they have their gifts are gone. That's what happens, it's universal law. It's an unsaid universal law. There's universal laws. The same way as my favorite line in K-Pax, the movie. Do you know that movie? Yeah, that movie's awesome. Everybody should watch that movie, K-Pax. <laughs> um, I loved it because he said this line, the psychiatrist in the film is asking K-Pax, so are there laws on, you know, do you have police? Like, how do you, you know, what do you do there? And he says, everyone, everyone in the universe or whatever he said, everyone knows the difference between right and wrong. He said, every, every being that exists knows the difference between right and wrong. And that is true. Even a psychopath knows that what they're doing is wrong. Everyone knows the difference between right and wrong. That's spiritual understanding that we can use and utilize in our lives. Are we doing what we're doing is right or good for someone or what we're doing is harmful? What, what are our choices? Did someone else have a question? Yeah. Oh, let me, let me get this lady's put up her hand. Go ahead. Please, it's too personal. You don't have to answer. And thank you for stating that right off the top. <laughs> Yes. You know, people like myself to ha have a tendency of taking energy and transmuting it and changing it. And I know that, like for myself, I've just come out of two years of a really hardcore um, healing my body from three car accidents that I was in. I've had a lot of pain in my body and a tremendous amount of pain over the last 10 years since these car accidents. And I do attribute part of it, not all of it, but part of it to taking on the energies of the world. And I'm going to, I'll take this another step. I had an incident recently <laughs> that was fascinating in this regard about changing energies and people that are sensitive. I went to an event with a woman and we, what, we got to the event and um, she went to park the car and the gentleman, the host was taking me to the back door. And all of a sudden from out of nowhere, it was like I blacked out for a second which was really weird. There's nothing wrong with me, but it was like I blacked out for a second. And I literally woke up like a millisecond later and I had tripped. And then I actually was forcing myself to trip again, which was really bizarre. And then all I heard was in my head that said, slide, slide. Cause I was on cement and there was all this stuff and oh, I could have killed, I could have been I mean, I could have been hurt. And so I slid my whole body. I mean, I had a road rash on me and I was laying there. My friend comes running going, oh my God, what happened? It was horrifying, but it was weird because I had no connection to it. Usually when things happen, I can connect it to something. I couldn't connect it to anything. I was like, I'm so confused. What just happened to me? I don't understand. So they said, um, they started saying, what's your name? Me and I said, Miriam. And they said, well, that's really strange because we've had three Marys who have recently fallen here in the last, I don't know how long, year, two years, I don't know how long it's been, but all of them were named Mary. And Miriam is the original name of Mary. So that's four Marys that have all fallen and really badly hurt themselves. And I said, and it was a spiritual center. It's a spiritual center. So I said, okay. So here's my story from going to Colombia when I was with the Mamos in Colombia. And I go into the water in the ocean and my friends are out swimming and it felt like something had bit, like I felt like half my foot was chopped off. Something happened in the water. And I walked out of the water barely. There was so much blood on my foot that I couldn't even see it. 
and I was screaming in agony. I was literally in convulsions, like true convulsions. I was in so much pain. And the Mamos, we were on a spiritual journey at the time, and they were giving payments to the earth in, the, in ceremony in these sacred points. And this was a sacred point area. And they came to me and they said, what happened? And I said, oh, I went in the water and something did something. It was a tiny little speck. I don't know what it was. It was painful. And uh, the Mamo said to me, I want to thank you, they said, because this is the point of all, the, all of the, the wars in the world. But I didn't even know that. They said, this is the point for all of the wars in the world. And because you, you hurt yourself because of the blood, all of the blood that you let go of and all of the pain that you took in, you are you have taken the pain of the wars of the world we thank you so yeah I, I i am hypersensitive and i'll actually i'll actually share even more with you it's very 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 personal but i'm, I'm going to share this with you um it's tough to be around me as a friend um at times or in any kind of a relationship because i can actually hear people's thoughts i'm that sensitive and uh, i have a dear friend who for years uh, all she'd have to do is say, I think I need to call Miriam. And then I would call her within a few hours. And this was going on for years. We didn't live in the same spa place at all. I lived in Vancouver. She lived in my hometown. One day she's sitting with all of her family at the table. She's saying, yeah, Miriam does this all the time. And I'm friends with a number of the people in the family. And they're all go saying, yeah, she's, I've seen her do this. And I've seen her do that and blah, 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 blah. And my friend said, she's going to call. And the family's like, no way, she's not going to call. And they're like, yep, she's going to call. It was 1030 at night. I picked up the phone and I called her. And I said to her, okay, look, man, what the bleep is going on? Are, are you talking about me? Like, get out of my head. What's going on? Because I would really like to relax now. And she was, she kind of went, it's her, you know. So I think that uh, many of us, take on the energies of the world and transmute them because we're we're strong enough to do so so we we take them on in any and all forms and some of us just don't make it as a result you know a lot of really gifted people psychically are very sick for that reason and how do we protect ourselves we do the best we can we do the best we can but when we when we walk down the street we pick up those those droplets we know what those droplets are. We're recognizing them. So please share with us the positive droplets. Like as I've discussed, share that positive energy because that's what it's about. We just keep changing it. So I think over time, we're gonna start to see less and less pain in the bodies of sensitives because the energy of the, the earth itself is shifting. And I know it looks it looks dreary and bleak out there right now, but I don't see that. I actually see that we're being gifted where, you know, the blinders are coming off. Now we really can see what's right, what's wrong, what's positive, what's negative. We can see all of that. And it's fantastic because if we don't see it, we can't change it. I've seen it for 30 years now. So I'm glad that other people are starting to see it with me so that at least we can commiserate together about the pain of the world, you know? And that's where we are. Yes? On the second Saturday of every month, we have a high end group here uh, at Simmons. And uh, my question is, you know, these are people that have had near-death experiences. Mm -hmm. And the group, and it helps you know, those that, uh, that have had the, a near-death experience to come and talk about it. Do they have a group like that where uh, they have people that have uh, communicated with the other side, such as yourself, where they get together and talk about it? I know that I know that meeting other people who have had similar experiences like this is always helpful. That's I, that that is one of the the reasons why UFO conferences are so popular because as soon as you go there, you find people that you can talk to about it. Um, I think that it's beneficial, but I don't participate in in groups like that. Um, I, I don't participate in, in groups like that. I don't do one-on-ones. Uh, in, in, I don't normally do them. But yes, they, they are definitely beneficial because 
you know, it is not about, it's not about being right about everything. It's not about my information is right and yours is wrong. It's about how we communicate and how we listen to each other so that we can talk about what we're experiencing and talk it through so that we can continue to grow um, spiritually. Have you ever considered channeling? Channeling is an interesting topic because, for example, um, when people channel, again, it's about the language. It's about the language for me. You know, in these subjects, we have to be careful about how, whether we broadly, spec, you know, take the broad spectrum of what channeling is and lump it together, or whether we, we define exactly what we're talking about. So here's what I would say. Channeling is about, because I'm channeling right now. That's clear. But I'm not channeling a being. I'm channeling cosmic energy. Cosmic energy is entirely different than channeling a specific being. So channeling is about opening yourself up to a specific being, a specific energy, a specific thought, a specific thing. I think that channeling a specific being is often, uh, is often what happens is that it confines, it is confining the, the topic, it is the message, it is the waters because the individual everything that I say has to pass through my brain if my brain on some level cannot conceptualize what it is that I'm saying then I cannot translate it back out so the individual has to be clear they have to be understanding of the the knowledge that they're sharing and they have to be in my opinion they really need to be humble because if not then their own personal ego will come out in it and I see that all the time in people that talk about channeling and channelers. I see that all the time. But channeling is something that we don't, we don't need the, the, the I, I believe and I think and I see that the time of channeling one individual and listening to the, the teachings of that one individual are, are, are not, uh, not benefiting humanity. We need to get to the cosmos. We have five minutes left. Uh, well, I, I've gone through a couple of tunnels, and um, what it looked like was vastness. Um, if you imagine that there's uh, looking out at the stars with, with a telescope through the Hubble telescope or something, it just kind of looks like that. It just, it's, you know you're in a tunnel, but you're not in a tunnel. It's, it's like there's form there. Sorry? Wormhole. Yeah, it, it, yeah, I mean, yeah, something like that. It's very hard to describe. It's very hard to describe. Um, I read your book, and uh, I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Freaked me out a little bit, too, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but there were certain things that you described in the book, and certain things that I'm, I've personally been experiencing recently in dreams, mm -hmm. um, also surrounding this phenomenon of the eclipse that's mm -hmm. coming up, mm -hmm. which I wasn't really paying attention to until I started seeing things in my dreams. Mm -hmm. And now with a lot of the violence that's been emerging in this country and also internationally, I'm wondering if, um, you know, you said earlier that these things aren't going to happen for some time, but I'm wondering... I, I'm noticing a pattern in my own life of becoming more aware of certain aspects aspects of this reality unfolding. So my question to you is, um, and I'm not asking you to predict the future by any means, but um, what do you feel about the current state of global affairs as it relates to the messages that you've received? What um, do I see as the what do I feel? Um, in relation to the current state of global affairs. To, co to global affairs in relation to, the, war, to the future, to what it, yeah, you know, what, to, and, and to the messages. Well, what I'm seeing is that the, we're at a point of, of um, consciousness as a whole 
that the 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 choices it's like we've gone through these stages it's been really interesting we went through a time of choice a time of awakening a time of understanding a time of this we're come we're starting to get to the point where truly the choices are going to be um, made for the future what i see is that we haven't fully made it out of the danger zone yet is what i see and that I think that there's going to be some really destructive things that are going to be coming. I, 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 I think that there's going to be some destructive things that are coming. But at the same time, I also see great, beautiful, great beauty happening as well, according to like what, what these messages have been. Because um, I know that there's going to be uh, challenges, and I'm not sure... I'm not sure anymore that they're going to happen from, I was, at one point I was always sure that they were going to happen from um, uh, global changes, meaning um, earthquakes and things. But now I'm starting to think that it might not all be from that, that it might be um, somewhat man-made. So, but are we going to go to war right now? I don't believe so. Not at all. I don't believe that at all. Because if we did, I'd be getting, I'd be getting different messages. And I gauge things on my, the way I feel, because I've been, I've been so accurate on this. Almost 30 years, almost 30 years, everything that they told me has happened. Everything that they said has been accurate. Everything that they told me was truthful, and it's all coming out, all of it. It makes me a believer. It makes me a believer. And it makes me feel good to know that we have the potential for a beautiful future. And as long as I feel that, I hope that it gives you some peace to know that I feel that still. So we have one more, really quick question. Um, have they told you anything about what's going to happen in the future that you'd be willing to share with us? You know, the future is not set. And that's, that's the thing, is that there's too many potential futures and that, um, that we're still in, that, in, the, in the course of that. Um, I could talk to you about, you know, 50 different things that they said might happen in the future, but it, it, they're all irrelevant. It, it's not, it's, it's not, uh, it's not tangible. It's not there. So, um, I'll, I think that we need to wrap this up, but um, I would like to, yeah, I, I, I would just like to say thank you so much for being here, truly, because this was very much a last minute uh, event. I had no idea I was gonna be here. And shockingly, this is only the seventh time I've ever spoken in public to a crowd of people. Um, the seventh time. I'm very, uh, I'm very private to a degree. Um, I'm very choosy about what I do. I really wanna feel the energy. It has to be right and I have to get guidance from them. I work from them and the guidance from spirit. That's how I work. If I don't get it, everything in place, I don't participate. So I want to thank Portal to Ascension because I really admire the work that they've done. And I think that more and more people should really uh, pay attention to what they're doing because they're another part of um, the global community, the same way as Collective Evolution is, another great online community to, to look for information and knowledge. And just to say that as Miriam, you know, as myself, as the, the, just the everyday average person, you know, getting here is not easy. And this job for me is not easy. And I don't know that it ever will be easy, um, but it certainly is rewarding for all the challenges and the ridicules and the, and the different things that have happened throughout my life. It is the most rewarding when, um, I've had the opportunities that I have to at, be an advocate for indigenous peoples, to help the Khoisan of South Africa the way that I have and some of the th work that we've done. They've done spectacular work there in, in working towards gaining their rights, in helping the Hopi to um, keep their water and helping to protect them from, um, you know, just things coming into their communities that are not right and balanced. And I think that uh, you know, the work that I'm doing is privileged. Um, so thank you for taking this time to travel, because I know some of you have driven for hours and hours and hours just to be here. And for the people watching, um, please continue to, to do your part and to be part of our global community and, and hold each other to the best of our ability. Because ask anyone that knows me, I, you know, 
we, we are the best that we can when we can be. We do what we can when we're able. But start taking, taking action, planting gardens, getting out there and caring for the environment, taking care of each other, taking care of the elderly. You know, we, we, need, to, we need to focus on the elderly of this world as, as, a, as a human species because we are in the now society of the world. Put down your phones, have dinner with your families and friends, have a conversation. It needs to come back to the simplicity. And I hope that even in this subject matter that people think about the simplicity. And, and I thank you all for, from my heart. Thank you.